In this video, I wanna show you how to get the most out of the Fruity Reverb 2 plugin. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. So I've been using FL Studio for a really long time, and for a while I was convinced that the Fruity Reverb 2 was just not really all that great. I could never really get the sound that I was trying to get out of it. And while I think it's a good idea to have multiple reverbs to work with and to use, I actually do use the Fruity Reverb 2 quite a lot. It's one of my go-to plugins, and if you know how to use it properly, it can be very effective. And that's my goal with this tutorial, is to show you how to get the most out of this plugin. Now, depending on the source of what you're putting your reverb onto is going to determine how you actually tweak the settings and what you're going to be ultimately going for. So in this tutorial, I'm going to use a vocal to illustrate what we're going to be doing. And then I may experiment with some more ambient sounds or something later in the tutorial to show you some different ways that you can tweak the reverb. So this is just a vocal from one of the artists I used to work with. It's a dry acapella. Darling. Why are you wasting my time? And let's go ahead and go into the mixer. I've got it rooted into the mixer, so I'm just gonna add the Fruity Reverb 2. So what a reverb plugin actually does is it simulates a room, and depending on the size of the room and the dimensions of the room and various other factors, you're gonna have different types of reverb. So for example, I do have this visual over here on the left, and if I go down here to the diffusion knob, I can bring this down and I can change the shape of the room so I can make it a square or even a triangle. And then the more you bring it up, the more walls you're adding. And then ultimately you can make it like a round room. So then of course you can change the room size so you could make it like a really big room. For example, auditoriums are well known to have sort of a really nice sounding reverb for symphonies and for choirs and orchestras, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and take a listen to what it sounds like with the default settings. Darling. Why are you wasting my time? So not necessarily the best sound coming out of this by default. Now you do have some different preset options which can be helpful. However, for this particular vocal, I think I just wanna go off the default and just sort of tweak it. So first things first, what I'm gonna do is turn the wet down. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna essentially turn the reverb itself down. So this is basically mixing the dry and the wet signal. If I bring it all the way up, it's gonna be super reverby. Darling. So if I bring it down, I can get just a little bit of reverb. Darling. So that's already a lot better. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit just so we can kind of hear the tweaks that we're doing. So I'm gonna go up to like 35%. Darling. Okay, and, and now another thing that I wanna do is mess with the pre-delay. So when it comes to a vocal performance and really a lot of different things that you're gonna be adding reverb onto, uh, adding a little bit of pre-delay can be helpful because what this is doing is it's allowing the dry signal to be by itself and then the reverb sort of kicks in after the fact. So depending on how high you bring up the pre-delay is gonna determine how quickly the reverb kicks in. So let's listen to an example of that. Darling. So that's pretty far, you can hear that. If I bring it up even more, let's go to like 400 milliseconds. Darling. So you can hear how, how spread out that is. So my goal with this is to make it so it's not noticeable that it's happening. Let's try like eight, 78 milliseconds. Darling. So that sounds pretty good right there. You can't really tell the difference between the dry and the wet signal of the reverb, but ultimately the vocal is gonna be much more clear in terms of actually being able to hear the words and all that stuff. Because one issue with adding reverb to a vocal performance is that it can kind of wash out the words and then also it can make the vocal actually sit farther back in the mix which in pop music uh, hip-hop you know a lot of modern genres we want the vocal to be sort of in the forefront of the mix and pretty much just sitting right right in front of everything so anyway let's move down to the high cut and the low cut and I usually take up the low cut a little bit just so we don't have the reverb on any like ba bass frequencies. And keep in mind that muddy frequencies can go all the way up to 600, 700, 800 hertz. So sometimes it's a good idea to cut up some of those frequencies as well. I usually bring this up to about 400 or 500 hertz and kind of listen to it and make sure that it's sounding good. And then I can cut out more of the, the muddy frequencies if I need to. But let's also mess with the high cut and bring this down a little bit to maybe about 2.5 K hertz. Darling. 
Okay, so that's sounding a little bit better. Let's take this a step further and move over to the damp knob. And this is where you can actually make the magic happen and really turn this into a more expensive sounding reverb. So if I bring this down to, I don't know, one, one K Hertz. Darling. Okay, so let's bring it up a little bit more. Darling. So like 1.5 K Hertz. Darling. So that's definitely sounding a lot better. It's a little hard to tell without being able to listen to it in the context of an entire track with instruments and everything like that. However, I definitely recommend that you experiment with this high damping knob on whatever reverbs you're doing and just see whether or not it makes it sound better because in a lot of cases it can. So the last knob that I want you to be aware of is the decay knob and this knob controls how long the reverb tail is actually going to last. So if I bring this up, I can make the reverb last a lot longer. Darling, why are you wasting my time? I'm not stupid, baby. I see the signs. So for this particular vocal performance, I don't really necessarily want a long reverb. So I'm gonna leave it at about 1.5 seconds. That sounds pretty good to me. And then another thing that we can mess with is the size, which we talked about earlier, but maybe a smaller room size is going to help help the vocal sit more in the forefront of the mix. Again, it's hard to tell with when we're only listening to it as an acapella and we don't have the full track to reference, but let's let's kind of mess with this a little bit. Darling, why you wasting my time? I'm not stupid, baby. I see the sign. So when we go into the smaller room size, we start to get this sort of unpleasant reverb sound where if you're sitting in your room and you clap, you're gonna hear this sort of unpleasant reverb sound. Uh, so it starts to sort of emulate that a little bit with the with the smaller room size. So just be careful of that. I think that around here sounds the best just when I'm listening to it as an acapella. But again, keep in mind, you're gonna need to reference this with in the context of the full mix to get a good accurate representation of how this reverb is actually going to sit in the mix. There is actually one last thing that I wanna mention about this reverb before we kind of wrap it up. I'm not gonna go over all the knobs, which you can probably tell. If you are curious about how some of these knobs that I didn't go over work, you can just hit F1 and the manual will pop up and you can read all about some of these different features. However, the last thing that I wanna mention is the mid side option here. So right now we have it on mid. If I were to go to side, you wouldn't be able to hear any reverb. Darling. And the reason for that is this particular vocal performance is recorded in mono as most vocals are. You pretty much have to record a vocal in mono when you're using one mic you would have to use two separate mics if you were wanted to record it in stereo. And one way we can actually turn this vocal into stereo is I can go back to my mixer and I can add uh, a stereo plugin. So for example, there's a free plugin called Ozone Imager and they also have a paid version, which is the Ozone 9. I'll use the free version just to show you how to do this. So what this plugin does is it allows you to take a mono signal and turn it into a stereo signal. And it also has a vector scope, which actually shows us a visual of the stereo information. So let's take a listen. Darling. So you can see this is a mono signal. There's only mono information going straight down the middle. Now, if I turn this to stereo eyes and I go ahead and bring the width up a little bit, it's gonna turn it into stereo. Darling. Why are you wasting my time? So the key with this plugin is you don't want to go too much where it starts sounding weird. Darling. Starts having like kind of a phasey artifact, uh, like a chorusy artifact, I guess. So keep it pretty small. Darling. But now we have that stereo information. Now make sure you actually bring the reverb down below the imager in order for the reverb to actually work. So we're still on side mode. Let's take a listen. Darling. So we're probably gonna to wanna to bring the wet up a little bit. Darling. Darling. Could even bring the decay up a little bit. Darling. Why you wasting my time? I'm not stupid, baby. I see the signs. 
So in my opinion, that's actually a much nicer sounding reverb. Again, we need to check it with the context of the full mix, but you can hear the vocal a lot more clearly. The reverb is kind of just sitting on the sides instead of taking up the middle. So the main vocal, the main meat of the vocal is sounding really crisp and really clean in the center. And then we kind of just have a reverb on the side. So this is another cool potential usage, uh, especially for vocals and stuff where you can get get some good sounds out of it. So let's move on to another example. So I have this pad sound and I wanna go ahead and add another reverb two on it. And what I wanna do with this one is kinda of create a really nice background ambient pad type thing. So for this one, I'm actually gonna go into the presets. Let's just do the venue. So we can actually kinda of get an idea of what different knobs were tweaked here. Uh, for example, it looks like the damping was brought down a little bit from the default. The low cut was brought up a little bit. The wet knob is up a little bit, it's up to 80%. The decay is up a little bit. Delay time's already set to 80 milliseconds. All that looks pretty good. So again, sometimes the presets can be pretty helpful to mess with. Let's take a listen to this as is. So I think this pad probably had a little bit of reverb on it already. What I wanna do is go ahead and bring the decay up here. So I'm gonna bring this up to like 14.5 seconds. Yeah, so that sounds really nice. And I can bring this up even higher if I wanted to so that it just plays out for you know a really, really long time, ultimately uh, up to 20 seconds. I can also mess with the damping. Let's see what a little bit more damping sounds like. I think for this one, actually less damping is probably good. Again, it's a little hard to tell when you're listening to this stuff in solo without the context of the full track. I always recommend that you're, you know, tweaking these knobs while listening to the context of the full track just to make sure that it's it's sitting right in the mix. I think ultimately that uh, where these settings were before were actually pretty good. And then, you know, you could ultimately add a little bit more wet onto it, bring it up to 100%. Anyway, you get the idea. There's another free reverb plugin that I use a lot for these types of sounds, especially, and that is the Valhalla Supermassive. So I definitely recommend picking that up if you don't have it already. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to hit the like button. I do do a lot of FL Studio tutorials, also sound design tutorials, and just production content in general. So if you like that stuff, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you're brand new to music production or you're struggling with anything production related, I do offer one-on-one -on -one private lessons which you can sign up for on my website so check that out if you're interested and i will see you in the next video